trying to chase down that team's 13 game win streak to open the season. Here in John Paul Jones Arena, we are underway. The Virginia Cavaliers, seventh in the NCAA and rebounding margin with plus 14.1 on the season thus far. The Seahawks doing a good job establishing themselves on the board. The starters for the Virginia Cavaliers. Sam Burnell has been so key spreading the floor. This time she's going to try it on the inside and she'll make it look easy. Who's able to leap and block shots and just deter shots is really good for this Wahoo squad. Miller driving to the basket with the right, takes the lane and she'll get an easy two to put Virginia up 4-2. And so coach talks about just valuing every time that she's out there, giving her the minutes and making sure that she gets some rest as well. Valade the other way with some pace gets an open layup. In this Virginia offense and so making sure that you not only hit her defender but do it legally. A deep two comes from just inside the arc and after a high bounce on the rim it will fall. Now only a two point game in the Cavaliers favor. With an acrobatic move Cavaliers wasting no time going the other way with Valade. A little bit of contact, but can't get the bucket to go. There's the steal, the shot, and it's in. And that's why rebounding is going to be such an important piece of this game. Every single time Virginia gets the ball out quick off the board, they get something good. Valade back to Dale and making it look easy. Brunel couldn't get the rebound, but a good box out gets it to the teammate. And now Virginia set up on the offensive end. They go inside. There's the move, the shot, and it's an and one play. So they slowed it down, moved it around, and she was able to use the opposite side. Is struggling with injuries, right? And so one of them being Mary McMillan, who is the second leading scorer for the team, 12.2 points per game. And how about that pass? Katie Pauly. As that three falls off of its mark, most notably Mary McMillan. And Pauly keeps the hot streak going with another two, Virginia. Virginia continuing to do so here at home. Down to five on the shot clock. Weaving up the two-point jumper falls and making it look easy is Alexia Smith. For number 42, Asia Henderson trying the three is Pauly. She can't get it to go and now UNCW pushing. Numbers in favor of the Cavaliers. There's the elbow jumper, and it's in. Now zero of six threes, so they're going to need to get going from the outside in order for them to come out of that zone. And Amir and the buzzer beating two will fall under the basket. How about that feat of athleticism? Well from beyond the arc, 0 for 11 across both two teams. As Miller gets it to Dale. Dale with five on the shot clock. Her just being able to catch off of a screen on the three-point line is exactly where she wants to thrive. Up and in the basket is good for Lexi Jackson. But I think she's capable of, of having double digits in a game, and if she can get going today, it'll be very helpful for Wilmington. Down to the baseline, that jumper is up and in. Virginia leading UNCW here on the ACC Network. I'm William Foge with... Lauren Moses, a great day for some Division I women's basketball. Tammy Reese, obviously Don Staley, the head coach of South Carolina. Tammy Reese with Rhode Island. But those two names specifically stand out just for their tenacity in that guard position. They're getting things done on the other end of the floor, but offensively they haven't cracked the code yet. As that two point is up and in, a laser of a bucket. You know, there's only a few more games before they get into their conference play, and so you want to be on in your best shape when you get there. Down the left alley, a good move made by Jade Gamble. Virginia lead now down to five. UNCW on an 8-0 run over the last minute and a half. Dale trying to give Virginia a bucket. Same spot, and she finds. Kicked again, Dale, Vaughn. How about that ball movement? And another missed shot. Now Brunel under the basket. And finally, Virginia is going to get one to go. Showcasing how it'll create points here. Here comes Dale the other way. Pull up jumper is in. And Dale making it look easy. How about a start for her? I think Virginia has to be very wary about when they find that offensive success, when they start to string possessions together. It seems like sometimes they get a little bit too eager to take those shots when their team isn't in position for a rebound or any help. That ball loose. It's Dale. 
racing down the floor. One in front to Pauly. Pauly, the contact, the shot, and the and one. You no, know, she almost came up with the steal there and then just elevating to try to contest that shot. It makes it really hard for guards to see their options. Dale again. But we just trust, trust Coach Mox and each other to do the job at hand. And so that is what's really just been allowing them to thrive. As we've said many a time, trying to hunt down the 13-0 start from the 1991-92 team that etched itself in the Virginia Cavaliers women's basketball history books as Dale. That time, Valaday going to bring down the rebound herself. There's Brunel, and Brunel gets the three-point bucket. This afternoon, but that's her comfort zone. Dale now trying a three of her own, and another quick step. She's got it from the corner. He's right, and a lot of things that they weren't successful at last season. So if you were a part of the squad then, it has to be joyful to be a part of a season in women's basketball. And UConn, Notre Dame, two of the best guards in the country. And Olivia Miles for Notre Dame and AZ Fudd at UConn, I think. Back at the one for the Virginia Cavaliers is Yonta Vaughn. Vaughn, the only Cavalier that has not scored today. She's so good at making the correct counter move to get the bucket. That shot off its mark, and UNCW going to end a long scoring drought. They're going to drive right up Main Street. It's McLean with a good jump pass down to London Clarkson. You know, moving forward, a lot of teams are going to do that to this Virginia squad. Change it up, going man and zone. And, you know, that time down, Virginia used the play that they play in man all the time. Putbacks right now haven't been going well, and a lot of times the guard, or, or excuse me, the post player is bringing the ball so low and going right back up. Mira McLean has some success with it, though. Just over a minute remaining here in the third quarter of play. And UNCW going to get a three to go from the top of the arc. Down to 10 seconds, swinging it around. They're going to go inside. Clarkson with a good one pass into the middle and getting the bucket. Uh, cutting hard, setting hard screens, all the little things that are really going to matter in the next couple games. Into London Clarkson, and she'll get the and one to fall. A good post move, shifts the pressure and gets two. Of course, all basketball fans know how important those free throws can be. As UNCW fighting through a little bit of pressure, that was Asia Henderson. Good steal made there. It's Carol Miller going the other way. Miller with the right and will find. As that pass is intercepted, it's Virginia going the other way. Down to Taylor with the right and another transition too. Her presence is the most important aspect of her game. The quick two jumper is up and in with 4.16 remaining. Katie Pauley, the three is up and in. With the number nine ranked Hokies circled on the schedule January 5th, the first of three consecutive matchups against top 25 opponents in Virginia Tech, NC State. Hoping There's nine. That. Only one rebound away from McLean. As she brings that one in, she'll kick to Polly. Polly, the three is up and in. Katie Polly. And that's why she's really been deemed as one of the heart and soul players of this team as she blocks a three on the perimeter. They get it to her. Alexia Smith, the pass. She gives the tip pass, and Valaday finds two. And the Virginia Cavalier fans are on their feet. Showing support. Outstanding play from... Everyone in a Virginia jersey, it's hard to just say one or two.